you ever had those moments where you just want a little bit of lo-fi Donna War 2? Well, you're going to get some, so I hope you're having that moment right now. We've got the Apothecary being played by King Fisher on the blue side, but on the red side, that Apothecary is going to have to fight Solaces. It's a weird word to say. He's going to have to fight the Ravener Alpha of Solace. But this is Leviathan Hive, and that immediately presents quite a problem for good old King Fisher. Leviathan Hive, as you can see from the minimap here, just look at the size of this map. It is absolutely gigantic with alleyways and angles everywhere. That's a problem against Tyranids in general because Tyranids are so much quicker than the Space Marines, but particularly against the Ravener Alpha due to these presence of these very strange gooey tunnels. I don't know why they've got so much goo in them. They don't look like they're that easy to traverse. I do wonder if the designers knew what they were doing there. They look like reclamation pools from which Tyranids spawn, not a tunnel that they would move through. Anyway, initial combat is commencing. Ravener Alpha is being poked a little bit. Nothing too major. Just a little bit of poking. To be expected, really. But here we go. I think the Ravener is just going to charge into melee with the Tactical Marines. Nice for the Ravener to take the damage on the approach and not the Hormagons, so the Hormagons lose no models. The Ravener could proc a special. He did proc a special there, but the attacks actually moved. Went to tie up the Terminants in melee, but... Engagement's not going great on them. The heal has been used. That said, a couple of lucky special attacks from the Apo could swing things in favour of the tags. But it looks like Fisher doesn't want to risk it, which is it's reasonable. You know, one tack, 75 wreck down the drain. That's basically all those four Homogons. Adding support structure. Paid for. Termigants loitering on that west side, not really a lot for them to achieve, given that they decap the natural wreck. I would assume they're gen bashing. They're not even gen bashing, they're just waiting. Why are they not gen bashing? I was going to say, they could be gen bashing, but it still takes forever for Termigants to actually take out a power node. Interesting they were seeing double tax from Kingfisher. I don't think it's terrible. The only problem is... The map's kind of big, and tags are not very mobile. But obviously in tier 2, you can go for the Razorback with the double tags, and that can make them a lot stronger. Double tags, Sanguine Chainsword. Versus Raveners. I mean, Sanguine Chainsword's going to be really nice against the Raveners. But he needs his ASM. Solace is going to need to get some warriors to help control any potential ASM. Right now the Apo is just moving in alone, and there's nothing to disrupt all the melee, so he's getting wrecked. Hormagons can kind of initiate and wipe him out. Ravener's burrowed on their own, so they're now taking quite a lot of damage. They do actually force one of the attacks to retreat. In fact, both the attacks are now compromised in melee, so they retreat. But not before dropping a Ravener model, which is always unfortunate. However, they killed the Tactical Marine and they killed the Apo, so that was definitely a hugely advantageous engagement for Solis. And at last, the ASM are on route. Now, if he had the ASM in that engagement, that would have gone very, very differently. Would have meant the Apo could actually get into melee without taking way too much damage from ranged. And then he'd just be healing constantly with the Sanguine Chainsword. But he also needs the upgrades and the scouts because there was nothing really there to deal with the Hormagons, just rushing the attacks. If he had some, some shotgun scouts, then that, that would have gone very, very differently. Keep them back. And even if the, the shotgun scouts are just used to counter-initiate with their shotguns against Raveners, they will do a lot of damage to Raveners. Raveners aren't that tanky. They're decent in melee, but they're not great in melee. So Solis is playing pretty sensibly here, he sees the ASM, that's a melee threat, he needs more of a melee counter at the moment, he's got 4 ranged units, 
combination of the ASM and potentially the Apo coming back, that would be a problem, so he's getting the Warrior Brood. Now not only are they going to be able to counter-initiate the ASM with a little bit of power melee DPS, they're nice and tanky, they can tie up tacks, they, but they, the most important thing is the on-demand disruption from the jump, which can knock over the Apothecary to stop him healing with his Sanguine, and also Synapse that he's now going to provide in those big blob fights. We're seeing more tunnels coming down on a lot of different parts of the map. It's definitely proving problematic. Fish is keeping up pretty well with his macro there, just gets the, the decap and then retreats straight away without losing any models. He's got really dominating map control actually right now. This is going to be a tough fight for him. Where are the Raveners? Okay, the Raveners are just running into melee. Yeah, Fisher doesn't like this engagement. He's got no Apo support, he's got no Scout support. So fighting all of these ranged units and the Warriors and the Hormigots, not ideal. I mean, Warriors plus Hormigots alone would be a problem the for the ASM. That's where the ASM need things like the Purification Rites. That's where they need the heal. That's where they need Shotgun Blast. And obviously, in that instance, he had none of that. So a bit of a, well, a full retreat basically from Kingfisher there, and now that means he's going to seed the map control. And the problem that the Space Marines have here is this tug of war with the map control it takes the Space Marines a lot longer to get out of base and reclaim the map. But this is to be expected because the Space Marines are meant to be weaker in tier 1. They've got a very elite force here, a very expensive force, but a very slow force. Now as we get into tier 2, we get support of the Razorback, we start getting plasma guns, we get the Space Marine ASM Sergeant, who can use Merciless Strike to basically one-shot Hormigons. Things are going to become a lot harder for the Tyranids. But here we go, we've got a big blob fight again. The pretty poor leading there, the Apo did get shot up quite a lot on approach, I feel like he could have timed that a lot better. He also healed way too early on his Apo there. This would have been the perfect time to heal once you're fully surrounded by enemies. The purification rights didn't really get much of an impact. But now there's going to be a second jump from the ASM causing more disruption. And honestly, quite a lucky special attack there from the Apo. However, Raveners have been on the back lines here. One of the models of the Warrior Brood does get popped and it causes a backlash which is really hurting the Homogos. Is there going to be another heal? There is. And that causes huge backlash towards the Hormigons, they're losing a lot of HP, now the Apo could just tie up that Ravener Alpha in melee, it looks like the Apo's probably going to die, okay, he does actually retreat, I think the Ravener's trying to position himself in melee, oh man, he fucks it up and he doesn't even get a single melee attack off, that is really unfortunate, now the Ravener is isolated on his own, not going to do very well against the ASM and the attacks combined, meanwhile scouts have just been capping the entire part of the map over here, we've caught the power node over there which is meant to be natural solace now they're going to take the vp so really good engagement there from king oh i didn't realize the raveners actually finished off these tacks here so that that was the big downside king was really focused on his apo and his asm and he didn't realize the raveners in the back line is still too late a bit like myself really and they did actually retreat and i thought they were going to get away but the raveners did pursue and finish off the tactical marines so that is actually really unfortunate but you know what it's not a huge deal because he can always just call in more once he's teching towards tier 2 using the drop pod global gets him in cheaper gets him in without the build time but in spite of all that you know kingfisher's build has just been so expensive so heavy on wreck he's gone for two war gears he's got that scout sergeant I mean, his gens must have come up so late going for double tax at, into an ASM, so the result of that is, well, here we go. Solis is already tier 2, and in a few seconds is going to already have a Tyrant Guard on the field. Now, the good thing for Kingfisher is, this is a Leviathan Hive. So this Tyrant Guard is going to take a very long time to get to the action. Especially once the Plasma Guns start coming out, you're going to be able to inch that Tyrant Guard very easily, and it's just going to be, it's going to be very immobile. Walking it back to base to heal, that is going to take forever. So it's going to be reliant on the shield wall, and even that, with the rate of damage that the plasma guns can put out onto things like Tyrant Guard, man, it's going to be in shield wall half the game. Personally, on this map, I would just not go for Tyrant Guards. Unless the Space Marine went for something like an Assault Cannon Dreadnought, which is obviously really vulnerable to the Tyrant Guard because it loses its melee resist when it gets that upgrade, I wouldn't be going for it. i just go for G Sealers. I would make my my warriors adrenal glands and I would just get gene stealers what the heck are they going to be able to do against all of this 
even if they get plasma guns, which, you know, Space Marines love in tier 2. Plasma guns really don't do that much against GC. -Sealers. But of course, the primary threat is always going to be the Riz back, especially on a big map like this. And that's what Kingfish is going for. So Solis needs to put on as much pressure as possible, which he's trying to do right now. He's getting the gem bash. That'd be nice to delay any further upgrades, but the Plasma Gun, unfortunately, he does already have enough power for, so that's on the way. Got Thunder and Lightning, so the uh, Melter Bombs and the Blind Grenades, which are rather useless, to be honest. Bit of a silly name, like Thunder and Lightning. Should just be called Melter Bombs. Because I don't know what's the Thunder and what's the Lightning there. No Sergeant yet for the ASM, so... Okay, the Sergeant's on the way now, but basically that has used up all of Kingfisher's resources. So we're not going to see any further war gear upgrades. I'm sure he'd love to get the Power Axe to drain all the energy off that Tyrant Guard and do some good damage, potentially prevent it from using Shield War. Razorback does have to be a little bit cautious. There is heavy melee on the field here with the Tyrant Guard, and do note that the Warrior Brood themselves have the Thorax Swarm. So they they are able to shoot off an Electroshock Grub if that Razorback gets too close, and that will do damage and snare it. Then once it's snared, the Tyrant Guard should be able to charge in and kill it in melee, so... Yeah, Fisher needs to be really careful about his positioning of the Razorback here. Don't get too cocky, because he does have vehicle counters on the field right now, even if they're not amazing ones. Now we're also seeing the Corrosive Devourer. I mean, Corrosive Devourer on the Ravner Alpha, absolute no-brainer choice against Space Marines. It does plasma damage by default, which melts the Marine models, and it passively does extra damage against vehicles. It passively increases damage against vehicles by 50%. Plasma doesn't do terrible damage against vehicles in the first place, and then you can use an ability to make it do even more damage against vehicles. So yeah, this is a threat, but right now, they should be able to shoot it to death. Oh, it doesn't matter, they're tying it up with the APO and the ASM, yeah, so it's got no opportunity here. This is part of the problem with the Tyrant Guard. Now the Tactical Marines should be getting in the Razorback, and they just can chase down this, this Tyrant Guard and, and force it into Shield Wall. Because the distance from the combat back to the base on this map is absolutely huge. Bit of a mistake here from Fisher not putting his plasma attacks in the Razorback. Get them in the Razorback and drive them far forward. They do the majority of the damage to the Tyrant Guard. So unfortunately the Tyrant Guard is going to get out without having to waste its shield wall. I don't think that necessarily should have happened. Plasma Gun needed to be used a little bit more effectively. Regardless, we're going to see the Venom Brood coming out for Solace, counting the Razorback of course. It's going to buff up all three ranged units too. And then we're going to see a Librarian coming out from Kingfisher. I've not seen the Librarian in a very long time, so this is going to be interesting. I do like the Librarian in this mashup. That Smite is really nice for popping the, the Synapse creature models, because it does bonus damage against heavy infantry. Veil of Time is nice under ASM to get retreat wipes, which generally support them, get away from dodgy situations. Gate of Infinity can be quite nice on the ASM as well, so you can jump them in, disrupt something, and then Gate of Infinity them out, so you don't have to wait for them to get the second jump, jump cooldown, or the energy, if you jump into potentially a very dangerous position. But he's actually opting for the Force Staff as the first upgrade. So this gives him some pretty minor buffs to his damage in both melee and ranged, but the main thing that it gives you is the Force Barrier ability which is like a conal ability, you, you choose a direction to put it in and then it generates a cone that gradually gets bigger and bigger as it goes on and it just knocks back the enemies. So you can use it to sort of zone out a certain area. It can be very helpful against melee tyranids, not so helpful against ranged tyranids. Hopefully with the smite and the plasma gun, you'll be able to pop the venom root very quickly, which then can protect him. But look at the amount of damage coming onto those ASM. They're going to need that heal very quickly. This might be an opportunity for Angels of Death. Oh my god, knockback from the Tyrant Guard. What is going on here? The Tyrant Guard is going to shield wall. I think that was an accident. And... Yet the, the, the Force Barrier came down, kind of knocked over his own 
ASM, they get out with only one model. That was very lucky. Smite finally goes in. It doesn't actually pop any of the Warrior Brood models. I do question the lack of Adrenal Glands on these Warriors. I don't know why he's gone for Forex Swarm. I guess he, he just wants as much anti-vehicle as possible, but he's still the Razor back. But right now, he's only focusing on that. Tank Gauss doing a really good job tanking. Very, very timely healed by the Apollo Carry. That's just going to be enough to get him out of there. Knocks back a few of those Hompnots, Foster them to retreat. Ooh, the Ravenous burrow in. It looks like they managed to take out the Apothecary. Scouts are then getting focus fired, as is the Razorback by the Ravenous Alpha. The scouts have to get inside that Razorback and pull back, and I suspect, yes, the tactical the planes are in there as well. So, remaining. honestly, that was a pretty awful engagement for Kingfisher. Bled you. like shit, and uh, Solus didn't really bleed that much at all. Just lost a couple of Gaunts. Who cares? They're so cheap. Ravenous full models. Venom's full models, Warrior's full models. Yeah, that was an amazing engagement for Solis. Let's have a look at the levels. Not a lot of XP on these Termigants, unfortunately, for them. It's hard for Termigants to get XP. They're only really good at killing the Apo and the Scouts. And, of course, Kingfisher in this instance only went for one Scout, so... Not ideal. Ah, Drop Pod coming down for Kingfisher. That, that's good, because he lost a lot of models there. That probably saved him at least 150 requisition. Which is pretty important. He needs all the wreck he can get at the moment. Kind of curious what he's going to actually opt for for his next purchase. It's not obvious to me what the best next purchase would be. I think I'd probably just get some some more attacks and give him another plasma gun. Get them with the drop pod. He's got plenty of red. Librarian harassing the side here, getting the the um, decap. Because he is a little bit behind on VPs. I mean, VP pressure is definitely going to be impactful here. I think Kingfisher is aware of that. I think he should send his razor back out to try and hunt some of these tunnels. At least whilst he knows where the Venoms are. So he's seen the Venoms down here, um, attacking the gens. So it gives you time to send your razor back out and just run over the tunnels. Vehicles will instantly destroy those tunnels when they run them over. But this is a scary position here, so the big Tyranid blob on retreat path. But Solis is kind of messing up here. He's moving his Venom Brute really far forward. And we get a nice heal with the Purification Rites into a Merciless Strike. And now there's a Force Barrier sending everything flying as well. But nothing is tying up the Venom Brute. Okay, I think the Librarian got onto it. The Electroshock Grub has gone down on the Razorback. But now there is basically no AV. There is still the Ravener, but that Apo has been doing really good job tying up that Ravener Alpha and his close of the Barrier in melee. And he's so sticky with that Sanguine Chainsword, healing himself in melee and also improving his charge range. That actually was a beautiful engagement for the Space Marines. Solis really screwed himself over, doubly so there. He moved all of his army for a tiny, tiny choke point, making him super susceptible to the AoE abilities of the Space Marines, as well as any potential synaptic backlash from destroyed warrior models. And then he also ran the Venom Brood really way too close to the enemy, not actually shooting at the Razorback. They were probably within range 18 or something, and the max range is range 44, and now Solis is capitulating. Thrown away his Termagants for absolutely no reason there, I don't know what he was focusing on. Maybe his Hormagants over here, maybe trying to make sure that the Tyrant Guard got into Shield Wall in time, because that was left isolated. So he just lost his Termagants for really no reason, but he's back on the field, he has that tunnel pressure, and now Kingfisher is a bit slow to react. The Electroshock Grub is down on the Razorback, and that is going to take out the Razorback in tandem with the Venom Root and the Ravner Alpha. So the Scouts are trying to get a Shotgun Blast, but they're going to be knocked over by the Warrior Brood, so they don't even have time to do that. They're nearly getting wiped themselves, but the Plasma Gun Tax got a lot of time to focus on the Warriors there. They don't have that much HP because they do not have that Adrenal Gland upgrade. It'll be interesting to see if he's going to swap to the Barb Strangler at this point. I think he should get the Barb Strangler because now that he's opted for the Thorax Swarm, he is very fragile in melee. Librarian should really be going into melee here. I don't know why he's suddenly ranged. Yeah. See the giant chunk of HP coming out of those Venoms when the Librarian hits them with that Force Staff. So Solis is choosing to replace his Tyrant Guard. I think this is a terrible idea. I think he needs he needs melee superiority, to be quite frank. I mean, there's nothing crazy in terms of melee threat here. Gene Sealers with Adrenal Gland Warriors would wipe the floor with all this. 
And that's part of the problem. He's going for these turret guards, but they're just so easy to kite. They're so slow, they're really bad on this map. Oh, Ippo should have seen that coming. He actually finished the cap. I don't know how he did when he was that far away, but he might pay for it with his life. Ravenous could technically burrow forward and try and get him. I think they're going for it. Let's see if he can get it. He should be able to. Oh, unbelievable. A little bit too slow on the burrow. Scouts running around with one model are very brave here. Smite on the warriors. Oh, false barrier. Okay. Interesting. Should just thrown the smite down on them, to be honest. Just keep them constantly weaker. Alright, there goes the smite. Not particularly effective. Yeah, the librarian's a bit too isolated there. Needs to get out, needs some support. Now, Kingfish has teched all the way to tier 3 while this has been happening. See, he had a couple of engagements there. He took that really bad one, and then he had a couple of engagements where he basically played nothing. I don't know where he got the power from, to be honest. I guess just he got enough from holding all these points, even though he's not, he doesn't seem to have had a full gem farm for ages. So I'm curious what he's going to be getting next. The ranged terminators would, right now, be pretty amazing. Ranged Terminators are always fantastic with the Apothecary because the Loyalist Terminators, they get better regen than normal. Well, they've done basically everything in the bloody game, but far better regen even than Chaos Terminators. And that improved regen stacks with the natural aura that the Apo has, which multiplies HP regen. Very, very, very questionable job there from the the ASM. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Kingfisher is kind of capitulating himself there. I don't know what, I don't know what that gate of infinity was. Teleporting his tax further back. He's lucky that wasn't the ASM. If he teleported the ASM further back there to the librarian, God, they could have died. Very strange. Panic, I think, is what that was. Panic. So they got terminators. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Terminators are on the field. So the counter to the Terminators is melee units. You you basically can't kill them at range, certainly not as Tyranids, because you don't have any plasma damage. The only plasma damage is that Ravener Alpha. But Loyalist Terminators are the only unit in the entire Space Marine roster that doesn't have melee resist. And that tells you something. You kill the fuckers in melee. And Solace is aware of that clearly because he's getting some gene stealers, but the problem he has right now is those gene stealers don't have any melee synapse support, so they're going to be very fragile to piercing damage. One little bit of knockback, maybe a good force barrier from the librarian, even just some purification right knockback, and those gene stealers are going to melt. But this game is clearly coming down to VPs at the moment, they're just constantly scrapping and skirmishing above these VPs. I really do like the Terminators in this, this instance because he actually has the Librarian to support them as well. Normally Terminators on such a big map would be a bit questionable because if they are caught out with lots of melee, they're not able to retreat out, so they're just going to get wiped. That's obviously what you have your Librarian to support with, the Gate of Infinity, potentially Veil of Time as well. Adding support structure. I'm not entirely sure what Solace is waiting for here. Kind of blobbing everything up in the middle, but not really doing anything with it. Maybe he's just had an Amazon delivery. No, it's okay. He's had a delivery of Thorax Swarm Warrior Brews coming out of the tunnel, and now he's moving forward. Must have rushed everything to these Terminators, it would appear, but. Yeah, I don't know. With the Librarian on the field, they've always got a way out. Especially if the Librarian and the Terminators are split up. If they're together, then that obviously doesn't really work. Ooh, Vanguard Veterans, nice. Now I understand why the ASM are running around with one model for so long. 
Okay, scouts get the explosive shot off, but it's kind of a waste. Angels of Death comes down, but too little too late. However, it should secure him the victory in this, this engagement. Plasma attacks need to be focusing on the Warriors, whereas the Terminators need to be focusing on the Hormigons. Because if the Terminators shoot the Hormigons, they're going to proc those Inspiration buffs, which is going to cause huge damage spikes to everything else. And now we're just getting Chain knocked back from the Backlash. However, it doesn't really affect the Tyrant Guard. I mean, it does take off 10% of the HP of the TG, but it doesn't knock them over. So the whole time, the TG was doing some pretty good damage there. Nearly wiped the Vanguard, but didn't quite. We see a nuke coming down. And now the Tyrant Guard is isolated again. Turn to new, good for buffs, not really good for damage. And fighting against Space Marines, the tankiest faction in the game. Yeah, it's not, not ideal, really. Nothing can deal with the Librarian on the far side either. There's only Venom Broods. They can't beat him in melee, and they certainly can't do much in ranged. The Tyrant Guard can't even go into melee here. It can't even go into Shield Wall because the Terminators have Power Fists in melee. However, the Terminators aren't pursuing, I don't really know what they're doing. They can actually just walk through these towers because Terminators are heavy enough. They do have cover crush. We should not be wasting time shooting at them when they can just walk through them. Librarian should have quickening available to give him nice damage resistance and knockback immunity for 4 seconds. Doesn't even use it. Just retreats and he does manage to get out. And that's the game, I just realised. The VPs are too low for Solace. He's got nothing left. He can't take this. But yeah, Terminators did their job. I mean, look at them. They're just completely unscathed. Honestly, the Vanguard were kind of the heroes there, tanking so much damage. Let's have a look at the levels. Nerdly level 4 on the tanks. Obviously, Vanguard level 1, he only just got them. Terminators don't level. Level 5, 8 po. Level 5, Ravener Alpha. Did put in some great work with that Corrosive Devourer. Pretty much always an effective war gear against Space Marines. Gaunts did okay in the end. Level 3, Termigants. Level 2, Hormigons. I don't really like this Warrior Brood. I don't know why he got the Forex Swarm but didn't go for Bab Strangler. And in general, I disagree with the Forex Swarm. I don't think it was necessary. I think Adrenal Gland Warriors and Gene Steelers in Tier 2 instead of these Tyrant Guards would have been so much more effective. I mean, he even ended up getting Gene Steelers in the end. Should have got them a long time ago, I think. Level 2, Ravener Brood, and then a Nero for up coming in at the end. But there you go, that is all for today. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Hope you enjoyed that one. That is all from your boy Torpid, signing out.